Have you ever taken a selfie just to find out that your face looks like an over dead wax statue straight out of Madame Tussauds just like this? See if you are into that and if you like that, don't watch this video straight away. This video is not for you. This video is for serious people. Hey there, this is Anmesh from Pix and Perfect and today I'm going to break the professional method of face retouching and face cleaning up into three simple steps. It includes healing and the f amazing and the amazing method of frequency separation. So don't miss that. Stay tuned. As I said before, there are three things that you have to remove or repair whenever you are cleaning up a portrait. One, blemishes. Two, skin tone. And three, wrinkles. Now, blemishes can be anything like pimples, spots, small spots, and tiny things like that, irregularities in the face. Okay, skin tones are the things that you have to repair. Sometimes in skin, you have blotchiness, you have uh, ready skin somewhere around the face that you can repair only through skin tones. Also, dark circles around the eyes come under this category. Then again, after skin tone, we have wrinkles. Wrinkles simply removing them can make you look younger. So we have to keep in mind that we don't have to remove wrinkles but to reduce them. So I have imported an image of a model into Photoshop, the link to which I'll post in the description below for you to work on. So let's zoom in and see, let's look at the blemishes. So rule number one, remove the blemishes. So before we going to, before we are uh, too ready to remove the blemishes, what we have to do, we have to duplicate the background layer. And to duplicate the background layer, one of the simple things to do is press Control plus J. If you are using a Mac, plus press Command and J. It's duplicated and if you don't want to use the shortcut so just drag here and paste it here now it's duplicated double click and name it blemishes okay so the easiest way to remove blemishes is to use the spot healing brush tool simply select the spot healing brush tool and paint over the blemishes and guys, just as a reminder, to increase or decrease the size of the brush, you have to press and hold Alt and the right mouse button, drag right to increase the size, drag left to decrease the size, drag up to increase the softness, drag down to increase the hardness of the brush. So let it be this way and simply paint over the blemishes and it will replace it with the surrounding skin. I'll speed up the process for your convenience. Now here we are in trouble. When I try to remove this blemish with this tool, what happens is it doesn't just look real, it doesn't just fit in. Why? Because, uh, because Photoshop is automatically sampling the surrounding areas and replacing the area that I painted with those samples. Now, what if I want, the, I want to tell Photoshop not to sample from this and this, I want to tell Photoshop, okay, Photoshop, sample from this area. How do I do that? I select the healing brush tool instead of the spot healing brush tool and press and hold alter option and the icon will change into a targeted one and click on the area where you want to sample from and now paint over this area and that way you'll get the kind of texture you want the blemish to replace with. Again select this and we are going to replace this blemish with that texture. So whenever the spot healing brush tool doesn't work, you should always switch to healing brush tool. So let me switch back to spot healing brush tool. So hence we have removed all the blemishes we could and let's look at the before and after of the image. So let's turn off the blemishes layer and see, look how it looked before and how is it now? So this is without, this is with the blemishes and this is without the blemishes. Now we are done with the first step. Okay. It looks kind of good, but there are still blotchiness in the skin. Look here. Blotchiness. Look here. There's a lot of redness and blotchiness in the skin and I'm being too picky. I know, but we have to get this perfect, right? So the second step, what? Improve the skin tone. To improve the skin tone, we have to use the amazing and one of the most brilliant techniques of 
frequency retouching and the frequency separation. So what is frequency separation? Let's take a break for a minute and let's understand what frequency separation is. Now frequency separation, what it does, it takes an image and separates the image into two parts. One retains the details and the other one retains the color. Suppose I want to edit the skin tone. Okay, suppose I want to repair the skin tones. This can include uh, dark circles, this can include blotchiness, readiness and a lot of irregularities in the skin. I want to edit that and I don't want to edit the texture. I don't want to, I, I don't want to affect the texture of the skin, the wrinkles of the skin. So I, if, if I just work on this uh, color layer, the wrinkles won't be affected. On the other hand, suppose I want to remove the wrinkles and I don't want to change the colors of the skin. I don't want to disturb the colors of the skin. I would work just with this layer. So the separation of images into details and color helps a long run in improving the image as a whole. So we are going to do just that right now. So how to do frequency separation? First, let's duplicate the blemishes layer. Duplicated. Now let's name it skin tone. Skin tone. Okay. And let's apply a blur filter on it. Blur Gaussian blur. Increase the blur to just that point where the skin texture is completely removed. You don't have to go all the way to here. You have to just go to the point exactly where the skin texture is removed. So I think for this image, it would be around 4.2 is doing working fine. Let's click OK. Now we have the colors in place. So this is the colors layer. We have to now create the details layer, the, the layer which has the details. Now, how do we create the details layer? Make one more copy of the blemishes layer and make rename it as details. Now, to make the details layer, simply apply a layman's concept, subtract the color layer from this layer. So it will become a details layer. If you subtract the color layer from the main layer, what it will become? A details layer. So how do we subtract that? Let's turn that off for a bit. Let's go to image and apply image. Now, select the layer skin tone. We want to subtract the skin tone from details, right? Make sure RGB is selected. Make sure that subtract is selected. By default, you will have normal selected. You have to select subtract and you have to keep the values of scale and offset to 2 and 128 respectively. Click OK. As you can see, this layer has nothing but details. It doesn't have color. It's plain gray. It doesn't have highlights and shadow. It just has details. So. Put this layer above the skin tone layer, turn the skin tone layer on and change the blend mode to linear light. As you can see, we get the face back. If you group the details on the skin tone layer to group, press Ctrl plus G, Command plus G. And if I turn this layer off, nothing happens. This means it's the same as this one. This group is the same as this one, which means these both two images combined to give the same results. So if I just, let me turn the background layers off. If I turn one off, so it's just a details layer. And if I turn just this on, it's just the color layer. So let's turn both on. It's both of the layer combined. Now I want to improve the skin tone. Now I want to remove the dark circles. Now I want to smoothen the skin. So let's select the skin tone layer and let's go ahead and let's start blurring the skin. Now. Let's select the lasso tool and suppose I want to blur this area and you'll see the magic right now. And yes, before blurring, let's make sure the feather is around 20 or something. So if the feather is zero, what happens? I'll show you. If you select, press Q to see how much of an area is selected. So the selection is quite sharp. We want it to be smooth. So let's press Q back again and let's deselect that. Increase the feather to somewhere around 20-ish. And now let's do that again and press Q and see how smooth the selection is. Press Q back again. And now what we have to do, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. 
increase the blur to an amount that is favorable to you to this whoa as you can see how nicely it has smoothened the skin with the details retained as it is we have to do it quite a few times see here's a lot of blotchiness here again we would go to filter blur Gaussian blur increase the blur to, uh, to the amount that we desire click OK so you want to have different amount of blurs to different areas all right so I'm going to speed up this process for you and let's not keep you waiting See, once you have set a blur value, for example, I want to blur this area, okay? Now, once you have set a blur value, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, suppose you like this value to be around 36, okay? Now, you want to blur the similar areas. So, in the similar areas, you want to have the same blur. So, all you have to do, you have to just press Control F and the filter will be repeated again instead of again and again going to filter blur and Gaussian blur. So we are doing the forehead and I've selected a value of say 36. I've applied it once and the second time I don't have to do a thing. I have to just select this area and press Ctrl plus F and it's done. Look how beautifully it has smoothened the skin at the same time it has retained the details, the skin textures. Let's turn this off and on and see how it was before and after. So this is before, this is after. So let's move on to step number three, removing the texture or reducing the wrinkles. So replacing the textures. So suppose I want to uh, remove this fine line right here. How do I do that? Make sure the details layer is selected. Select the healing brush tool and suppose I want to sample this area and replace this texture with this texture how do I do that press and hold alt sample this area and simply paint over the fine line as you can see the color remains the same but the texture is replaced we'll do that a couple of times in this picture actually she doesn't have a lot of wrinkles but if you're handling a picture with a lot of wrinkles this will be extremely handy to you so let's look whether this image needs it. A little bit here. And we are good to go. So finally, we have completed cleaning up the face and this was a long tutorial so let's look at the before and after and see how far we have reached with this image so let's turn all the uh, all the effect layer into one group so let's uh, select all the layers with the effects turn it into one group press ctrl plus g and let's turn this off and see how it was before and how this is after we have edited so we have come a long way that was all for today this was a long one sorry for the long tutorial and hope you enjoyed the tutorial hope this was helpful for you this is Umesh Tinda from Pix and Perfect signing off and don't forget to subscribe I'll see you guys in my next video till then stay tuned and happy photoshopping